Can we tell this guy about it? Nope. Flip a coin for a tying court. I've already done the coin flip earlier when we got started, Erakai. You won, so I will change into my shirt and tie, but I'll do that after the first break. I'll, while I'm on break, in a couple of hours, I'll go, well, an hour and a half, I'll go and change. Take as much of the props as you can and run and sell them on eBay, yes! That's it, from the now defunct but legendary Steel Samurai show, one of a kind. What, you're still slinking around? If you like the place so much, why don't you take over for me? Sure. <laughs> the old windbag doesn't look so good. Everybody's doing their darndest to forget about Hammer. Why do they think they, um... Uh, who do they think made Global Studios what it is today? She'd be embittered about everything, I bet. We need to pl uh, play up to that. Hammer. It's all due to Hammer. He's starting to froth at the mouth, Nick. Maybe we should keep a safe distance, yeah, in case she bites. So, five years ago, cast your mind back. I wanted to ask you about five years ago. <laughs> Who told you? Who did you hear that from? I, uh, uh, Nicholas. Nicholas? Nichols? What? Uh, Nicholas? Nick? Penny? Nicholas? That assistant we talked to? Oh, right. Anyway, uh, we heard about the accident. It was during the filming with Jack Hammer. He killed a man, didn't he? Whippersnappers! <laughs> Wanna know what happens to the costume? Tune in next time in another Ace Attorney series. But then it gets cancelled and you never find out. Dredging up dirt on someone's past like that, and the recently departed no less. I suppose you think this is fun. No, I'm doing my job to protect Mr. Powers. And how can you claim that Hammer stole Powers' costume? You expect me to believe that rubbish? Or do you have some kind of proof? Proof that Hammer stole the costume? Hmm. We do have kind of proof. I can prove that Mr. Hammer stole Mr. Powers' costume. I mean, that doesn't prove it. This bears Jackhammer's fingerprints. Hopefully this is right. Here's my proof. What? What's a little empty bottle supposed to prove? It's a bottle of sleeping pills with Mr. Hammer's fingerprints on it. What does that prove? I'm sure old Hammer had some sleepless nights. Where's your proof he used those pills on Powers? This is Powers' steak. They got rid of it on eBay. Yes, that's it. Mr. Powers ate a T-bone steak for lunch, correct? Well, yes, so... This plate uh, that he used to eat the steak. There's traces of sleeping pills powder on the plate. <laughs> She's really struggling to swallow this one. I see. Poor, poor Hammer. You did wrong, Hammer. You rest your soul. Wow, she quickly turned around. Okay, Amber, thank you very much for hanging out. Hope you have a good evening. Sleep well. Thank you for dropping by. I'll see you later. Uh, Ms. Whit- Ms. Oldbag? Okay, you win. I'll talk. I'm tired, see? Tired of holding it all in. Okay. You're right. Five years ago, there was an accident. A fatal accident. What's worth? A paparazzi took a photo of it. The photo? Well, it caused quite a stir. Guess who made it all better? Vasquez. She has ties to the Mafia. Wow. She silenced the paparazzi. Oh, did they get him fitted with some concrete shoes? That was the beginning. After that, she became a force to be reckoned with here at the studio. See, you have to understand. Poor old Hammer never meant to harm anyone. Well, no, that's the essence of an accident. Ms. Oldbag, hold on a minute. Poor Miss Oldbag. I don't sympathise with her now. Here, take this. Hmm? A photograph? Look at this photograph. Oh, damn. But wait a second. I told you it was going to be the spike. 
This is the picture. Is this the trailer in Studio 2? Hammer was supposed to fight with a bad guy on the top of those stairs. He pushed the other actor and the man fell onto the flower box fence. <laughs> she looks like she just ate a sour mouse. Yeah. Oh, definitely. How did you get this? It was a long time ago. I don't feel much like talking about it. Okay, I understand. So five years old photo added to the court record shows the accident. In so what does this pr help prove? Them? I mean, if anything, we can prove a pattern of deceit from Vasquez, but are we going to say that Vasquez is the one who killed him? And if so, how? Let's go to studio, um, let's go to the outside area first. Maybe we should check studio one before we check studio two. Just make sure we cover everything before we go right to the scene. Think back, Nick, to the day of the murder. Mr. Hammer put on the Steel Samurai costume, then he left from here to go to studio two. Right, because so his body was found in one. But why? I wonder if someone called him, like the director or the producer? Or he went there on his own to, you know, try to fool them into thinking he was ready to begin filming. She found out and killed him. Which is kind of weird, but... It's incontrovertible when this clock inside this statue that speaks the time stopped. So we know from 2.15 this was knocked over. Supposedly by a strong gust, gust of wind. And everybody that was in Studio 2 down the path couldn't get past until they managed to move the fallen tree out of the way. They were literally blocked in. Because, you know, they couldn't just cut through the bit of woodland there. Yeah. That camera saw a guy in the Steel Samurai costume coming this way around two o'clock. But it didn't see the victim Hammer coming this way to go to Studio One, which is where he was found. That was always fishy, and now we know it's because the only person to come this way was the guy in the Steel Samurai costume, which was, now we know, the victim. So they took him to Studio One, and then they dressed him up in the Magistrate's costume, which he should have been in left his body there, but there's no blood. That's not the scene of death. Gotta run, so you're gonna lurk. No problem, Papa Naka. Thank you for the lurk. Have fun with uh, your day. See you later. That's the entrance to Studio One, where they found Jack Hammer's body. We don't have the key card anymore. We can't go there. That's right. Yes, we lost the key card. Go to Studio Two now. Oh, look who's here. Hey, Nick. It's Miss Vasquez. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> H-E double hockey sticks. Oh. <laughs> King Pulsar! How's it going, my friend? Good to see you. You love this game? Awesome. I think it was you that was in Octo's chat when I said I was thinking to play this. You were like, play it, play it, play it. <laughs> Yeah, I like this game as well. It's getting it's really good. Maya, you should at least try to be polite. I'm watching the clouds. She is just away with the fairies, this lady. That's all she had to say, apparently. Last time we came to her, she was like, I need to see a script. And we were like, okay, but can we talk? I need to see a script. And it's like, uh, she's disconnected from reality. <laughs> Let's examine the area again. Right, so the plates do not have bones on them. Even though the producer, no, the director, said, Oh yeah, yeah, we did eat, actually, we brought food over here. Uh, we went back and got it before the tree fell, and then, like, you know, we ate it here. And they had T-bone steak like everybody else. It's like, really? You did, did you? Because where's the bones? Did you eat them? Nothing left on the plates. Hey, so they ate T-Bone Steaks too. 
Yes? Finally? Somebody gonna figure it out? Something I figured out the minute I looked at these? I don't know, I'm getting a funny feeling. Oh god. Something about this feels odd, you know? Yeah. Can't say that I do. Hmm. What is strange about this? God, these guys are so slow. They just put an incinerator in, it's covered in soot, so they don't clean it much. That's the van, blah blah blah. And then this must be where the accident happened. Some flowers here. So pretty, they're taking good care of these. Don't get too close, that fence looks dangerous. It's already killed a man. Closer inspection, this trailer looks like it's been here for a while, blah blah blah, we already know that. Okay. So let's zip across here, chat to her. Um, excuse me, Mr. Hammer came here the day of the murder and... Shh. Huh? Perhaps you didn't hear me. Oh right, you're watching the clouds. I'm not interested in talking to you. Do something, Nick, she's really ticking me off. Oh dear, she, she, you're triggering Maya, could you please stop that? Um, Ms. Powers, uh, Mr. Powers wasn't the killer. You don't have to cancel the Steel Samurai. I think I'm tired of the Steel Samurai. Oh, you just, oh. oh Maya's poor heart. You, you did it. Nick, she did it! She's the killer! Oh my god. My fable speaks to me, I know it, I know it! And the director? I was wondering if you could tell me about Mr. Manella. You must talk about that man. Perhaps you could talk about it in the trailer. By yourselves. Oh dear. Alright, we need to present something to her to get her to start talking. And I think... The thing we need to present to her is this. You know that dirt? <laughs> You're heading out now, Chassis. No problem. See you later. Thank you for the host. Have a good day. Guys. Beeping at me. There we go. So, let's see how far this goes. She's not even looking. Where? What? Where did you get that? Aha, uh -huh, well. <laughs> Old bag. Old? She means the security lady, Miss Old Bag Nick. Right, anyway. Ms. Vasquez, you hid this incident from the press, didn't you? And you used it to control Mr. Hammer. The wind. Huh? It's gotten stronger, don't you think? The wind? Your conversation interests me. Let's talk about it more inside the trailer. Nick, she went inside the trailer. And then we walk in, and we get killed. Hmm. Hmm, you came. Well then, what was that you were talking about? Why is she, she so eager all of a sudden? She needs to know how deep she needs to bury us, basically. Ms. Vasquez. You were using that incident. You were blackmailing Mr. Hammer so you could control him, weren't you? That's why he was doing the kids' shows for, uh, a petty change. Hmm. <clears throat> so, I'm a blackmailer now. Well, that's what it was, wasn't it? I mean, sure it was an accident, but you used it to drag Mr. Hammer down from his rightful place as a star. Oh? I haven't pulled anyone down from anywhere. Mr. Hammer's career went sour of its own accord. But... You were the cause, you pressured him. And to think it was just an accident. Excuse me. What is this all about? You keep saying accident, accident. How are you so sure? What do you mean? Must I spell everything out for you? Think. What would it, uh, what would it be if it wasn't an accident? Moida. No, no way. You mean Mr. Hammer did it on purpose? That's what I mean. So where's your proof? Can you prove it? Hmm. Just think, would he have let me run his life for five years over a mere accident? And I ran him hard, believe you me. 
But the security lady said it was an accident. Well, of course she'd say that, wouldn't she? She'd say that because she idolised him and thought it could only be an accident. He's a, he's a nice man. Oh, well, she was a big fan of Hammers, you see. She jumped uh, on the reporter who brought that photo into the studio. She wrenched it out of his hands, she did. Gave him a few bruises, too. But that's why she had the photo. She's an old fool. Of course, all the reporter would need is the negatives. He could have made a copy, but he didn't. The only copy of that photo is the one you hold. Give it to me, now. What? This is valuable evidence. Boys? The fuck? Goons? Hired goons? Oh my god, where were they hiding? Under the table? Behind the A-board? Um... Who are they? Professionals. They're good at erasing various things. What do you think? Would you like to be erased? What? Trial ends tomorrow. How unfortunate. It's a shame you'll have to miss it. Tell me why. Why do you want this photograph so badly? This is Mr. Hammer's dirt, no? Why should D. Vasquez care about that at all? I'm sure you'll have plenty of time to think about that, where you're going. So long, friends. Boys, erase away. No! Oh, Gumshoe! Hold it right there, pal! I heard everything, pal. D. Vasquez, you're coming down to the precinct with me now. <laughs> She's surprisingly unconcerned. Hmm. Not bad. Very well. It appears this contest will be decided tomorrow, then, in court. I'll be looking forward to it. Hey, you okay, pal? Gumshoe actually being useful for a change and doing what he's supposed to do. Sorry I was a little late with my entrance. I don't get many chances to practice that sort of thing. He was waiting outside for the opportune moment. Detective Gumshoe, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was really scared. Huh? Don't mention it, pal. Just doing my job. Are you gonna blush? He's blushing. Detective Gumshoe? Sorry, it's just I have wanted to say that line ever since I became a detective. Oh. He got his moment. I hope it was worth it. Okay, I've got one more job to do today. I'm sure we'll run into each other again soon. Well, Nick, it looks like we're getting close to the bottom of this. And who's at the bottom? D. Vasquez? Do you continue? Right now. <laughs> Oh man, we're right back to the courtroom? So are we really going to say that D. Vasquez was the killer? I mean, she's the only person that could be, and I don't think that director could fight his way out of a wet paper bag, to be honest. So she probably just used her, like, goons that she keeps in a nearby pocket dimension or whatever the fuck to kill him. And the director just shut his mouth. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Today will be the final day of this trial. I hope both the prosecution and the defense will be able to present decisive evidence. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement. In yesterday's uh, session, the defense presented us with a new theory for the case. He claims the scene of the crime was in fact Studio 2. Today, I will call on people present in Studio 2 trailer that day. From their testimonies, the truth will become clear. <laughs> Very well. Interesting you didn't say you will see that Mr. Phoenix Wright is mistaken. Edgeworth seems a bit on edge today. You may call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls Miss D. Vasquez to the stand. Miss D. Vasquez is the producer who was present at Studio 2 trailer that day. Excuse me, there's no smoking in here. Will the witness state her name and occupation? D. Vasquez, I am a producer for Global Studios. 
On the day of the murder, you were in the trailer in Studio 2. As everyone here knows, yes. I dislike needless banter. If you must pontificate, do it when I'm not here. <laughs> this, this case has not been good for Edgeworth's heart. Very well, Miss Vasquez. Please give the court your testimony concerning the day of the murder. Nick, I know she did it. Make her pay. Right. If she's guilty, I'll catch her with her pants down, so to speak. Yeah. Let's be less creepy about this, Nick. So the day of the murder. I entered the trailer. Oh, a little before noon. The meeting began at 12 sharp and ended at 4. There was to be a, a rehearsal afterwards, so we went to Studio One. I was fatigued, I had Sal take me. What? What do you mean you had Sal take you? In like a rickshaw or something? Did he carry you on his back? Like Yoda? At 2.30 we took a 15 minute break in the meeting. Sal and I ate T-bone steaks on the table in front of the trailer. With no bones! We found Hammer's body later when we all went to Studio One. That is all. I have a question about one part of your testimony. You were fatigued, so you had Sal take you? Yeah, I'm glad somebody's asking this. The van. Oh, hmm. There's a van at Studio 2. Well, that's bullshit. Actually, now, when did this get moved? At 4. Okay, I guess they could have used the van by then. That is possible. So if they didn't finish well four anyway, and they were still there, so... I thought it might be risky to walk, what with the monkey head toppled over. Okay, so Manila used the van to drive Vasquez to Studio One after the meeting in the trailer. I... I see, very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. This is the final battle, Nick. Let's do this. Alright, cross-examination time. I entered the trailer, oh, a little before noon. Question. Everything. By yourself? Yes. And you didn't stop in the employee's area? No. Are you always this terse? Yes. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> the less said, the better. Let's just make sure it has... It has this habit of skipping over another line of dialogue sometimes. So... So I will, I will always go back. The meeting began at 12 sharp, ended at 4. Hold it! Did no one leave during the meeting? Well, she's coming to that. No one. Come on, let's talk a bit more about that. OBJECTION! The witness has not come here to engage in idle conversation. Stop interrupting the testimony. The same could be said to you, Mr. Edgeworth. And please stop banging your hand on your little desk, it hurts my ears. Okay, so it hasn't skipped anything. There was to be a rehearsal afterwards, we went to Studio One. When? When exactly was that? I've forgotten. Bullshit. Maybe you could try remembering. No. The meeting ended at 4 and the rehearsal was scheduled for 5. I would think it was between those times. You would think. Come on. All you did was state the obvious, Edgeworth. Okay. I was fatigued. I had Sal take me. Hold on. You had Sal take you. What does that mean? It means what I just said. I had Sal take me in the Studio 2 van. At 2.30, we took a 15-minute break in a meeting. And what were you doing during that time? Don't hit your desk. It irritates me. <laughs> Edge was like, Yeah, Mr. Wright. Oops! <laughs> oh, Edgeworth. It was a 15-minute break. Sal and I ate T-bone steaks on the table in front of the trailer.
Do you have someone who can verify this? Sal. No, I mean someone else. One person is enough. If she committed the murder during that break, she wouldn't have had time to eat a T-bone steak. If I had some evidence that she didn't eat a steak... Well, Nick, find anything? Yes? I mean... Kinda wish she'd said a little more, it's hard. I think she's pretty used to being the boss, but I'm sure you'll find some kind of contradiction in what she said somewhere. It is gonna be the stakes. It's just... What do we have... that we can say... See, this specifically is about the traces of sleeping pills. It does say, and a large bone. So if we present it, we're presenting it because we're showing that the other plates had bones on it, those didn't, but we don't have the other plates listed in evidence. We can't necessarily contradict the van. There's no reason to. Although, they could have taken the body in the van afterwards. But we've got nothing we can point at yet. So let's just object with this. And let's see where this gets us. Ha! As I thought. Hmm. You claim you ate a T-bone steak. But I say you did not. What's this now, Mr. Wright? Look at this. <laughs> it's a plate. This plate was on the table of the employee's area. As you can see, a large bone has been left behind. <laughs> Mr. Wright, need I remind you it was a T-bone steak? Exactly my point. Thank you for verifying that, Edgeworth. You are very helpful to me. I, I, I value the help you give. Remember, if you will, Ms. Vasquez and Mr. Manella ate at a table outside the trailer. They were unable to go get yeah, Fuchs, they were busy with their meeting. Yet there were no bones left on the plates. The plates were bare. <laughs> Ms. Vasquez? Tell me how can a person eat a T-bone steak and not leave the bone? I think I know how. You ate the bone too! No. You ate a boneless steak, or you just didn't eat steak. You didn't eat any steak during that break. You didn't have a steak break. You took your steak and threw it somewhere like the incinerator. Because they didn't have time. They wanted to have that as an alibi. No, you wouldn't have had time because we were eating. That way you didn't eat. Mm-hmm. I see. Then what was Ms. Vasquez doing during her break? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? Picking on Salmonella. Probably, yeah, but she was meeting the Steel Samurai, of course. She was meeting with the Steel Samurai. 